years. As you know, our model is essentially focused on debt financing and we work through field partners. So the, you know, the assessment is primarily done on the field partner, who could be anyone. It could be a microfinance institution, vocational training provider, artisans cooperative. So the first thing that we see is the, the processes that have been built so far, uh, however small it is. Right? Uh, even if they are working in a couple of districts with a small number of uh, you know, in families, are the processes there in place? Do they have some kind of structure in place where there is a clear understanding of how their relationship is with their end uh, beneficiary, either the customer or the entrepreneur? The second one is the partner's skin in the game with uh, the end uh, beneficiary, the entrepreneur. Essentially what I mean is, you know the success of the the success or the failure of the entrepreneur ha directly has an impact on the success or the failure of the entrepreneur because you don't want somebody to come in. I can give you an example. You know, let's say solar lights for example. Uh, we don't directly work with you know product companies who just want to come and give the lights. You do the financing and you know they just take the money up front. They leave. I mean there is no buy in. There is no skin in the game for you know the companies. So we see a clear skin in the game requirement. The third one is everything else is figured out. Financing is the key problem. So there, in India, I always say this, uh, there are two main challenges. One is distribution slash market linkages. The second one is financing. One is how do you take the products to the market? The second one is how do you make it affordable? So we strongly you know, work only with companies which has figured out the first one. Like, let's say an artisan's group, they know where to get the raw materials from, they know how to train them, they have a market linkage. What is missing in the piece is that working capital that can, you know, pull the entire machinery together. And fourth one is, can this become part of the mainstream banking system? You know, we, we are not looking at ourselves being the sole funder all you know all our lives. We want these guys, and we are very small part when you you know look at the requirement. The whole idea is can we show some proof of concept to make it more interesting to somebody like a mainstream banker or a social fund who can then pump in more money and you know take it from. So we take it from let's say 100 to 500, and then this banker comes in and takes it from 500 to. 20,000 or 25,000 and there have been examples around that. So these are the four things we look at when we you know, uh, assess a field partner. We believe in our field partners, the organization that we work with. We believe, we look them as an entrepreneur or an enterprise. Because their vision, just to share an example, I again like to take since uh, uh, Vanashri Rural Development Center Baligar is here. The idea was, his idea was how the, how he can scale up the whole livelihood activity around goatry and dairy. So it is not like any other institution, hey, uh, he has uh, 1000 groups, I mean, or 500 groups, each one will be given 20,000, let them do what they think, and I will ensure that they can. That's not the point. The point is, what can be scalable, how they can provide supports so that the whole initiative is successful. So that is the kind of entrepreneurship capability that we are looking at, because our Goal is also for organizations like this to be sustainable, not to depend on charity. That's been our goal also. So we are looking at who are looking at their enterprise to be sus uh, sustainable and also take it to the people. And some of the other initiatives, we, we don't just focus on debt. We constantly strive to make it at this bottom of the pyramid how equity kind of financing can be done. We have done some, some experimentation in the dairy cooperative model, in the water model. It's still in the experimentation stage, but we would like to, uh, we feel there is a stronger need in this sector. I think the, so the themes that the group here has already articulated does cover the gamut in terms of what, both for that matter, in the, in the non-profit space and the for-profit space, the themes are, are virtually identical. The other, the other, um, the other, uh, if you want to say, the factor that comes into play when you're talking to either nonprofits that are starting to starting and they want some grant money, or for that matter, a uh, startup business, and that's clarity, clarity of mission, and clarity of purpose, and their focus in the business. Um, too often, you'll see somebody with a, 
a, a general idea of something they want to accomplish, but they, or they may have three or four different ways of getting there. But somebody who has the has what Vidya said, the passion for that idea, and what Will said in terms of the, in terms of the talent of the team, that's far more likely to be successful over time. Uh, so that'd be one area that I would add. Now, self-help group federations took the responsibility of taking up this idea forward. Okay. So then, from first year, we had 128 farmers among the poorest, the farmers who are not the landowners, the leaseholders, who are having, you know, I don't know how many, 10 decimals of land, not even an acre. So those kind of farmers were actually practicing SRI. So when they saw success, the village organization took the responsibility of replicating the same thing in other villages, taking this best practitioners. And they actually turned the entire Indian agriculture exchange system on its head. The exchange system works with only progressive farmers and the farmers who have capacity to, tenacity to take up this kind of work. So once this was taken up, you know, the moment we hit 50,000 farmers, then government of Bihar said, come on, in our agriculture strategy, we will have SRA as a core principle and ask the project to draw it. Then we said, no, we are not an agriculture department. Our project is only working the poor for the poor and agriculture department, then we support vegetable uh, agriculture department to create an enabling environment. So as a result, what happens, you make a small investment which is risky, try to influence the policy and create an enabling policy that the poor are able to reap the benefit of that kind of policy. So that is the trajectory I think SRA we can try to work. Um, as investors, let's assume that you know everything you know about microfinance now. The question I always get asked is as you scale, you know, and more money gets pumped into your organization, how do you keep your social values? You know, how do you keep yeah, and so the question is, if you were the first entrepreneur of a microfinance organization before it got big, what would you do, knowing what you do now, to make sure that those social values were still embedded in that organization to prevent? Um, but let me just talk about the general case of investing in a social impact for-profit organization. And the question is, how do we determine that that organization will maintain its true north, which is to have impact, while it scales? And We've asked ourselves this question many times, and we've read literature, we've talked to people, and the best answer that we've come up with so far is we look at you, and we interview you, and we talk to you, and we get to know you, and we figure out what is your true north. What is you, the passionate leader who wants to build this business? Why are you doing it? Are you committed for the long term? Are you going to stop at nothing to achieve your impact? Or are you in it for the quick buck? Are you uh, doing this because uh, it came out of an uh, you know, experiment and you think you're going to do something else in three years from now? Um, I'm not sure if I'm the best person, but I, I would just completely agree with Will on this. Um, you could do structures and you could make it complex and create holding companies. And, but at the end of the day, I think if the entrepreneurs, if we assess the entrepreneur right and continue to to um, progress, um, monitor, you know, the things that remain important. I think you have a pretty good shot at uh, keeping to the true north. I think uh, the question about impact, you know, finding the, I think it boils down to the entrepreneur and the way I see it is a bit differently. Sadly and ironically, currently in India and perhaps worldwide, there's a lot more capital, there are a lot more investors chasing a handful of entrepreneurs. So the entrepreneur, it's entrepreneur's responsibility to find the right investor. So you need to really find the right investor who believes in your mission and not really looking at the term sheet, you know, and sort of, you know, you know, the, you know the, the things which you should not be looking at or he or she should not be looking at. So I think the entrepreneur has got an enormous amount of choice. So the entrepreneur needs to take that call. The North for us in the Shpane Foundation is, is very uh, simple. That the work you were doing uh, one year back, if suddenly there is demand for that work or not. If work you were doing is set, will break even in whatever terms in, in terms of finance, is it not? Are the client you were reaching, or is it growing by 10%, 15% or not? And finally, you know, there is this larger goodwill, there is uh, it, hopefully it's not harming environment and so on and so forth. It isn't that difficult. What I find as a foundation, I mean us, that it's a lot of enthusiasm in starting something and then idea is great and principles are in place. It's the execution that falters.
you know, the numbers, no, it didn't happen, this happened, you know, a lot of these X, Y, Z, externalities come. So it isn't really the, you know, I think people are in this sector really good at keeping north. But execution and keeping that kind of, you know, uh, what do you say, commitment, rigorousness uh, to keep on doing what they were doing more efficiently. So, sure, I know. Entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs today are a lot more aware of the challenges of scaling a company than the microfinance guys who were building it, right? So today the whole fact that you as an entrepreneur and I as an entrepreneur have this constant tension going on as to how do we keep up the social ethos of the company while at the same time scale, I don't think that was a question uh, that was in the minds of them because, you know, that, that never happened first, right? So the whole fact that there is some kind, there is there are no real answers to the question, but the fact is there's some kind of tension. And as an entrepreneur whose values are in the impact first, at least you are making an effort, you know, to balance it out. Whether you would be able to succeed or not is a second question, but at least you will be making an effort that the predecessors weren't making. We we'll, we look at a combination of uh, qualitative and uh, quantitative um, metrics. Uh, when we when it comes to looking at impact um, on the output level I think you know all of us really have a good idea of numbers and you know and not only the number of beneficiaries and the costs and so on and what's actually happening but also on the slightly more sort of intangible level in terms of what's happening in the community what kinds of uh, impact is, is it having on the women children depending on the program so there's a combination of things that we look at. Basically, two organizational aspects that we as partners commit to, uh, to improve. So this could be, say, for example, um, one organization may be wanting to scale but could cannot do it with higher governance standards. So we work together on establishing very clear metrics that we will look at to assess whether that the new governance level has been achieved or not, not simply just adding board members and new processes, but also the way, the attitude to governance. Or to, for somebody else, it could be that their impact, um, their data gathering systems are poor or not as strong as they need to be. So then we looked how to use easier methods for them to collect, uh, analyze, and then put out data that enables them the work. So it's a combination. It's not just what the program is directly doing, it's what the organization has done over the, over the period of grant to uh, scale up as an organization.